um, and we can get started. So just to give you a little brief overview about Northeastern, um, we are a top 50 research one and experiential learning uh, university, which means that we are in the top tier of universities that um, offer a research experience or an experiential learning experience. We are ranked number one in co-op, which um, we will be discussing later in the presentation. Although we're speaking about the College of Engineering today, Northeastern does have nine colleges and schools. We have over 1,300 faculty and nearly 30,000 students and a very wide global campus network. We are ranked among uh, ranked 15 among private universities um, in the United States. So you can see um, some of our competitors there. Um, many of these might be familiar to you if you're also applying to other institutions. So you know that within um, uh, Northeastern itself, we are very highly ranked. Um, and we also have some of the highest graduate engineering enrollment, at least in the United States. So you can see some of the schools there as well. We are a global campus network and we are consistently growing. Um, you can see all of our campus locations around the world there. Um, but as I mentioned today, we'll be focusing on Vancouver and Portland. Um, but within each of these campuses, you do get the same research, education and experiential learning. But as Tiffany and Kayla will explain to you, there are benefits of enrolling in particular campuses. Within the College of Engineering itself, we have six departments. Um, so you can see them there on the screen. Many of those you will hear of from your undergraduate education. So those might be um, familiar to you. And just our multi multidisciplinary graduate education um, is just, um, it's not quite its own disciplinary department, but it'll be more focused on tech fields. And these programs really pull from different departments engaged in their curriculum and they are mostly set towards what is happening in industry today. Um, however, the campuses and the programs that we're speaking about today will be in these um, specific departments, um, will be in the disciplinary departments. Um, you can see within the College of Engineering itself, we have a number of degree programs. We offer programs from the PhD level to the BS level, um, and we also offer graduate certificates at the graduate level. Um, you can see on the screen that we do have global campus programs in many different campuses, including our Rue Institute in Vancouver that we will be talking about today. Um, as far as our research experience in the college, we are um, offered up to $82 million in external awards each year. Within the college itself, there are 18 multi multidisciplinary research centers and institutions. We are funded by eight federal agencies in the United States. And you can see on the screen there that our research is focused towards health, sustainability, and security. So and in the COE, our mission is as an academic institution, our main product is people. Our success is based on the quantity and quality of the people we produce. So if you are speaking to our Dean, Dean Abel, he believes that a good engineer solves problems, a great engineer solves important problems, and a transformative engineer discovers and it solves important problems. So really within the COE, we are really focused on making sure that you come out as a transformative engineer. Within the college and within the admissions process, we have students called graduate ambassadors. Um, unfortunately, none of them were able to join the webinar today, but um, you are welcome to reach out to them at their website. They are here to assist you with program questions, what to expect in your new city, and things like housing. These are current students, so they are just like you, and they have gone through the admissions process. So any questions you have about what that process is like, they would be able to answer it for you. And we really hope you're able to connect with them. In the college itself, um, there will be multiple ways for you to get involved. And this will also vary by campus. So there may be things on your particular campus that um, you'd want to get involved with. But this is just kind of a sampling of some of the engineering student clubs. And these are open to um, any student um, at the graduate level as well as the undergraduate level. So just real quick for prospective students, I know some of you on the webinar may have already submitted your application, but if you are submitting for fall 23, there is still time for you to submit your applications. Um, so June 1st is our international student deadline outside of the country. So um, for instance, if you are applying to, I'm sorry, inside the US, I should say, um, 
no, that is outside the US. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, this will be the deadline outside of the US. So if you are outside of the US and you are applying to RU, your deadline is June 1st. Um, if you are outside of Canada and you are applying to Vancouver, your deadline would be June 1st. Um, and if you are domestic for either of those campuses or are already in the country, your deadline is August 1st. So we do have some admissions requirements. Um, they are pretty standard to different applications that you may be uh, applying to to different places. Um, we will require two letters of recommendation. For the application, you are only required to submit unofficial transcripts. After you're admitted, we'll give you more information on how and when to submit your official transcripts. You will need a statement of purpose. Um, you will need a resume. The GRE is entire, entirely optional, but if you do want to submit a GRE, you are more than welcome to do so. And for international students, with a few exceptions, um, you would be required to submit an IELTS, TOEFL, or Duolingo. So before I hand it over to Tiffany, I do encourage you to keep in touch with us. Um, for COE, we have a COE graduate admissions website that'll provide you with information about requirements and deadlines. We also have a robust FAQ website, which you can find answers to many of your questions. Um, however, if you are interested in connecting with us, we do welcome you to email us directly. And as I mentioned with the student ambassadors, they are happy to connect with you as well. So please do reach out to them if you have any questions there. Um, their email address is there on the screen as well. Um, so with that, I will be handing it over to Tiffany and she will be able to walk you through the Vancouver campus. Thank you, Marissa. Um, thank you. And then please um, go to the next slide. Um, thank you. And I just want to quickly introduce our team here in Vancouver uh, from the College of Engineering. Um, uh, my name is Tiffany. I am um, um, the um, admission uh, recruitment team. And then we also have Antonio, which is from our COE program, uh, which is the academic advisor and program manager. We also have Si Yi here is the assistant co-op coordinator located in our Vancouver campus. Um, so uh, with 11,000 tech companies and uh, employing 250,000 British Columbians, uh, technology is the fastest growing sector in BC. Um, BC is well represented uh, in key tech sector like AI, blockchain, uh, clean tech, cloud, SaaS, digital health, FinTech, um, gaming, security, software um, and emergent tech. Um, BC tech sector is growing fast and there aren't enough qualified people to fill all the open roles. So this increase in demand for talent has also caused the wages to increase. Currently, the wages for tech workers in BC uh, exceed the provincial average by 75%. Next slide, please. Um, thank you. Uh, Vancouver is one of the livable cities in the world. So with our mild weather and stunning nature beauty, our city, our city is safe and diverse um, and extremely welcome to students around the world. 30% of British Columbia's immigrant to BC from another country. Uh, you will find our Northeastern Vancouver campus have diverse staff and faculty member. Next slide, please. Uh, Vancouver is located on the west coast of North America, um, just a 45 minutes flight and three hour drive from Seattle. Um, because of Vancouver's geographic location, um, several of the tech giants have chosen Vancouver as their Canadian headquarters. Vancouver also been called the Hollywood North uh, for its very well developed film industry. Next slide, please. So currently in our Vancouver campus, we have over 520 current students, uh, 35,000 square feet of our uh, campus uh, um, space, 25 uh, full-time staff members, six, uh, six graduate programs, 30 full-time and part-time faculty members. Um, and we currently have 60 local, um, local employer partners. 
Our newest location is across the Amazon Vancouver expansion. Uh, and then you will find Microsoft SAP, Fujitsu, Global AI Headquarters, Salesforce, and more around us. Uh, we are located in, in uh, at the 410 West Georgia, which is the Deloitte Summit Tower in downtown Vancouver. Our operation and classroom are on the second floors, 14th floors, and 15th floors. And the second floors and the 15th floors will be ready by uh, May this year. So next month. Next slide, please. And here uh, are some uh, pictures of our uh, Vancouver campus classrooms. Um, so there, uh, there are all the programs that currently offer in our Vancouver Regional Campus. Um, for the College of Engineering, uh, we offer the MS in Data Analytics Engineering, and the MS in Information System will be uh, the first intake uh, will be January 2024. Um, here are some of our co-op employer partners located in Vancouver Regional Campus. Uh, we, we have some uh, global um, um, uh, partners uh, like Amazon, uh, Deloitte. Um, they're well established in our Vancouver um, tech sectors. Um, and also uh, we have a well-established uh, Canadian uh, company like uh, Bank of Montreal, uh, Royal Bank of Canada, Scotiabank, or TD. We also, 96% uh, of our co-op are paid uh, in our regional campus. Um, I will pass it along uh, to our colleague in, uh, in Rue Institute, Kayla. Oh, that was great, Tiffany. Um, I just learned a lot about the, the Vancouver campus. Thanks for sharing all that. It's um, really cool to sort of contrast both of these different Northeastern campuses. So um, this, is a, this is a picture of the city of Portland, which is a much smaller city um, than Vancouver um, Coastal. And um, I'm excited to, to tell you more about the Rue Institute. Um, next slide, please. So again, my name is Kayla Frank, and I am a recruitment and engagement manager here in Maine. And I primarily work with prospective students who are interested in learning more about our programs. Um, so whether it's helping you connect with an enrollment counselor to learn more about the programs, perhaps connecting with faculty members who can share more about their research and professional experiences, um, basically just here as a resource um, to help share information. Uh, next slide, please. So today I'm just gonna share a little bit about the Rue Institute and our unique mission, partnerships and scholarships. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the city of Portland, Maine and the state and the area as a whole, um, our campus, and then the specific um, student support and learner services that we have on ground um, at the Rue Institute. And then um, the next steps that you should take uh, should you be interested. And next slide, please. Thanks. So one of the, I think, most important factors about the Rue Institute is that when it started three years ago, um, a philanthropic partner here in Maine called the Alf Harold Alphon Foundation. They support many educational initiatives in the state of Maine. They partnered with the Rue Institute and gave $60 million um, for us to help make graduate education um, more accessible. So we feel really lucky to be able to offer students who enroll in our programs need space scholarships. Um, and so for instance, just to get a sense of this, um, every student who enrolls in a program and starts this fall um, is awarded a minimum $25,000 scholarship. So this is, is really critical to our, our program and our students here in Maine and um, students who are international and coming from the United States are eligible for these significant um, scholarships. So we're really excited about that. Uh, next slide, please. 
So I mentioned before that the RU Institute has a sort of unique mission. Um, it's really designed to generate economic growth um, and help innovate the talent pool in the state of Maine. So Maine, the state has some a number of sort of economic challenges. Um, we are and we have an aging population, and we have a pretty small population given the the size of the state. So much of the state is rural, and then in southern Maine we have a really you know, sort of like thriving population, and we're trying to bring more people here. So, for instance, the um, the scholarship opportunity and a lot of the way we're trying to make our programs accessible are meant to sort of address those challenges um, and support economic growth here in the state. Uh, next slide, please. So again, we're located in Portland, and Portland is a small coastal city. It's really pretty, um, and we're just two hours from the Boston campus, um, which is really great, and it's accessible both by, you know, driving. There are also bus and train options, which, is, which are really convenient. Portland does have its own airport, a uh, small airport, which I love, um, and it's easy to get to the Boston International Airport, too. So we're in a waterfront campus. Um, so similar to Vancouver, we're in sort of a, our campus is one building that we have two floors of. And um, on any given day, we have industry partners in the building. We have faculty, staff, researchers. Um, we also have a tech incubator. So um, entrepreneurs are on campus, um, part of our residency program. Um, and and the other, I think, important part, as been mentioned before, the co-op opportunities, um, the RU Institute was really started in part with a lot of main employers um, giving their feedback. Uh, next slide, please. So in addition to Northeastern's, you know, giant network of co-op companies, um, these are Maine-based organizations that the RU Institute is partnered with, and every partnership is a little bit different. So for some of these, we're, we're connected with other academic institutions in the state of Maine and are working on things like accelerated master's opportunities for students who graduate from those programs. Um, we're partnered with larger corporations like L.L. Bean. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that company. Um, and they offer co-op opportunities for our students. Um, they're looking for a talent pipeline. Um, that was sort of one of the main um, cases for, for starting the Rue Institute here in Maine is that we need to strengthen the talent pipeline for all of these employers who need skilled, um, skilled people in their workforce. So every partnership is a little different, and these organizations are really invested in the success of our students as well. So they're just another resource um, and opportunity for, for students who, who join our community. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just some pictures of Portland. Um, Portland is fun. It's a, it's a big um, tourist destination. Maine's population actually doubles in the summer, which is kind of crazy, but also really fun. Um, so in the summer, we have cruise ships that are parked right in this harbor here. People are coming downtown to see the restaurants and the art scene, um, which is really fun. And then there's a whole big lakes region in Maine. And so a big part of the sort of like economic ecosystem of the state is, is driven by tourism and hospitality. So it's a really fun place to live. Um, it's fun to live in a place that people want to visit. Um, so, you know, we get through the winter months that are tough. We're like finally coming out of um, the winter now. It's like there are finally little buds on the trees and things. Um, and everyone is always very excited about um, the summertime. So very, we're, we're always looking forward to that. Uh, next slide, please. And then these are these are some images of our campus. So we have a really um, open concept kind of space. And it's great because I'd say a lot of like impromptu um, collaborations and connections can happen because on any given day we have people from the community of Portland and Maine on campus, our industry partners, or even people who are just along um, for um, like community events and things. Um, and all of our classrooms have the great technology that makes participation, whether you're online or in person, um, a really good experience. We have students who live all over the state of Maine who are enrolled in our programs. So it's important that we can provide um, both kinds of experiences um, really well. 
Uh, next, please. So at the Rue Institute, uh, we offer the bioengineering and electrical computer engineering programs. And um, we also offer more than 20 plus Northeastern degree and certificate programs. So when you join the community, um, students are studying analytics or applied machine intelligence, computer science. And we have a nice diverse group of people who are studying part-time or um, full-time students who maybe just came straight out of undergrad. Um, it's a really diverse group of people. And so um, the, the cohorts for bioengineering and electrical computer engineering are growing. And students are really pioneering the programs here in Maine, which is an exciting, exciting component of that experience. Uh, next slide, please. So for our on-ground services, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of the resources that um, help our students be successful that we have here. So um, our enrollment and admissions counseling um, are located here. So for instance, me and our recruitment team, the enrollment counselors who help students through the whole application process um, and can share about scholarship information um, are here for prospective students and through all that process. And then once students confirm their enrollment, they can be connected with an academic advisor who's specific to those um, engineering programs. And they help students do everything from register for classes to um, figure out like the right course load or, or balance. So some students may change their status from part-time to full-time throughout their um, school. And the academic advisors are just a really great support for helping and make those decisions. And then of course, we also have the career and co-op advisors who help students apply for the co-op positions, everything from, you know, anything related to professional development. So whether you're um, you, whether you're participating in a co-op or whether maybe you're not and you're just trying to update your resume, you want to negotiate a higher salary or you want to figure out how to um, implement the skills that you're using in your grad program in your job, um, they are a, a great resource. And then, um, as Marissa had mentioned, we also have student, advise, uh, student ambassadors who are current students enrolled in our programs who are a great resource um, for, for students who, if you're just trying to like find a way to connect, whether it's through fun and community building activities, or maybe you need a tutor. Um, they are people that you can go to. And then we also have representatives from the Office of Global Services Advisor for our international students, um, for those who, who need support with any of that process. Uh, next slide, please. And then lastly, like next steps, if you're if you're interested in learning more, feel free to reach out to me directly and um, I'm happy to help make whatever connections that you need and, and provide any support that I can. And thank you so much. Great, thank you so much um, for Tiffany and Kayla for providing such uh, robust um, explanations of your campus. Um, I know I've learned a lot from both of you today, so I really appreciate it. Um, for any of the students who are currently on the webinar, I am going to put up just the contact information slide from COE. Um, if you need Tiffany or Kayla's contact information, um, I know it has already been put on the slides, but please do let us know in the chat. Um, I'm sure they're happy to share their contact information with you. Um, it, since we have a lot of time left in the webinar and we wanted to provide that to you so that you can ask questions, please let us know your questions. Um, you can drop them right in our Q&A box. Um, we're happy to answer them for you. Um, and then just as another quick FYI, um, just check your inboxes. You will be getting follow-up information from us. So if you have questions and you forget our contact information, um, don't worry, we will be happy to answer you um, with follow-up as well. So please do let us know your questions. Um, so I see a question in the chat um, for when admissions for fall 2023 will be out. Um, I will say that this is a very, very common question. And um, unfortunately, we don't have a specific answer for you. Um, it really depends on what program you're applying to. Um, so the faculty who are reviewing your application. Um, and we also have um, uh, the volume of applications as well. So many of these programs are very, very large. So we have one or two faculty members reviewing quite a few different applications. 
So in general, students who apply for fall 2023, if they apply by our early deadline, so that would be January 15th, they typically hear back um, in the mid-March to mid-May timeframe. So um, if you've applied for the Jan January 15th deadline and have not yet heard back, um, we totally understand that that um, can be a little frustrating and um, a little anxiety inducing, but please know that it is entirely normal that you may not have a decision at this time. Um, if you applied after our priority deadline, it is possible that you could hear back within the same time frame. Again, that depends on what program you're applying to and how many applications faculty will be reviewing, or you could be hearing a bit later. So unfortunately, we don't have the exact answer um, and it'll be different per student, um, but please know that it is totally normal if you do not have a decision at this time. So, um, and that'll be the same for all students. So I know a lot of you probably have questions about when you will be getting your decision. So that was an excellent question. Thank you. Um, so if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A um, or the chat. Um, and even if you have questions about specific campuses or um, what it'll be like as a student on campus, please feel free to put those questions in the chat as well. Um, so I see another question. So is it uh, possible for our students to transfer from one campus to another after being admitted? Um, so the short answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, if you'd like to transfer from Boston to Maine, that is 100% totally possible. Um, we would recommend um, if you are an international student that you do decide to transfer campuses before you submit your I-20 request. Um, this just makes things a lot easier for us. Um, if you have already submitted your I-20 request and have been admitted, um, we would just ask that you um, let us know that when you're asking to transfer campuses. Um, so yes, as long as you are either admitted to the bioengineering or the electrical and computer engineering, um, you can transfer to Maine. Likewise, if you're admitted to data analytics, engineering on our Boston campus, you are more than welcome to transfer to our Vancouver campus. Um, our faculty program directors are very open to that once students are, have been admitted. So if there aren't any other questions, um, and again, we're very happy to answer them. So if you do have any last minute lingering questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, we will be wrapping up the webinar. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us today. I know many of you are joining from around the world. So I'm really happy that you were able to come and join us today. Um, and then another big special thank you um, to Casey, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Casey is answering questions. So thank you to Casey. Um, and Tiffany and um, Kayla as well. Um, and I do see we have one more question. Um, so to the question about the 25% scholarship, um, if you are awarded a 25% scholarship, um, it would be 25% off each semester that you are in the program. So not just your first semester. Um, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about if you have gotten a 25% scholarship. Um, and then Kayla, you can correct me if I'm <laughs> saying this wrong. For the Rue campus, the $25,000 scholarship um, is just applied to the overall 
um, amount of your tuition. So all of these, if you are awarded a scholarship, again, there's nothing that you have to do to um, have this adjusted on your tuition. It would just be automatically applied. That's correct. The, the $25,000 scholarship for fall 2023 is applied across the program. So it would be like discounted for every credit pretty much like across the whole tuition cost. Awesome. Thank you, Kayla. Mm -hmm. So I see a question um, for students who apply to more than one program. Can it be switched to subsequent subsequent ones other than the first choice? Um, so yes, I'm assuming um, you are someone who has applied to multiple programs. So if you've applied to multiple programs and are admitted to all of them, um, for example, say that you have been admitted to bioengineering, for instance, but you also apply to electrical engineering. Um, if you're accepted to electrical engineering later and you've already accepted enrollment for bioengineering, um, you would be able to basically switch your enrollment to electrical engineering, even if you've already confirmed enrollment for bio. Um, it is really important to remember you can only be enrolled in one program at one time. Um, so if um, you are admitted to two programs, you do have to cancel your admission in one program to be able to enroll in the other. Um, if you're admitted to a different program and you would like to switch to a different program, but you have not applied to the program you'd like to switch to, that is not possible unless you apply to the program. So within the College of Engineering, um, to be able to switch to a program other than the one you have been previously admitted to, you need to submit a new application. So um, just using the example of bioengineering and electrical engineering, if you've been admitted to bio, but you'd like to switch to electrical and computer, you're, but you have not applied to electrical and computer engineering, you would first need to submit a new application and then you would have to be reviewed by the, that faculty review committee and then you would be able to switch. So it's not, um, it's not a simple yes, no, it really depends if you've been admitted to both programs. So I see another question about the $25,000. Um, so like Kayla mentioned, it would be spread across um, the entire, your entire program. All right, um, so if anyone else has any questions, please let us know in the Q&A. Otherwise, it looks like um, we've answered all of the questions in the Q&A. Um, so once again, thank you all for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned, you will be getting a follow-up email from us, so please check your inboxes. Um, and then thank you so much to Tiffany and Kayla for joining us today. Um, there, uh, if you want to keep in touch with us, um, our COE admissions office web, uh, email address is on this slide. Please reach out with any other questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah, thank you so much. You did a great job answering all those questions. <laughs> Thanks, Kayla. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Bye. everybody.